In this video, I'll be showing you how we can connect NeoPixels or RGB LEDs, otherwise known as pixel strips, to a Raspberry Pi. These are RGB, red, green, blue LEDs and enclosed into a single element, often with a built-in controller, a WS2811 or a 2812, are the most common. These allow you to communicate to each individual LED and control them, the brightness and the amount of red, green and blue, providing just about every colour up to white. The NeoPixels is Adafruit's particular brand of these pixel strips, but you can buy other brands and they're, they're commonly available on eBay or through Raspberry Pi or electronic suppliers. The particular feature about these um, RGB LEDs is that they need to be sent a particular timing signal. This can be accomplished on the Raspberry Pi by using PWM or the PCM port. This is achieved using software libraries that are available to download from GitHub. And I'll provide a link to those in the description. So to convert from the 3.3 volts of the Raspberry Pi GPIO port to 5 volts required for the NeoPixels or pixel strips, then we need a level shifter. There's a variety of these available. Adafruit provide one and other suppliers provide one. Or you can use a buffer uh, that goes from 3 volts, 3.3 volts to the 5 volts. Or you can build your own using a simple MOSFET. We can create a simple circuit using a MOSFET. This is a transistor which is switched on by a voltage. It has three terminals, a drain, a source and a gate. The drain is connected to a resistor which connects to the positive supply and the source is connected to ground. When this is switched on this will allow a current to flow through and hence the voltage across the transistor will be virtually zero. When it's turned off then no current can flow and the voltage across the MOSFET is at the, the voltage of the supply, in which case we'd use 5 volt supply. It's turned on and off through the gate and by applying a positive voltage to the gate it turns on and putting that voltage down to low value it will turn it off. You may notice that this means it's actually inverting so when we turn it on the output goes low and when we turn it off the output goes high. That's fine because the software library allows us just to invert the signal and therefore we get the opposite of what it needs to provide which is converted through the MOSFET. This is what the Adafruit NeoPixels, um, breadboard friendly NeoPixels look like when you buy them. Uh, they're provided on a um, PCB strip and each one can be individually broken off. There's no connectors. Um, the, the connectors are holes um, which you can solder wires directly into them. To use these on the breadboard I soldered header pins onto them which allows it to be inserted onto the breadboard. If you don't want to do any soldering then you can buy uh, through the hole LEDs which um, basically just have four pins on them and you don't need to solder those on. Alternatively you can connect to the longer strips. This is a uh, pixel strip and as you can see these have connectors on. Now these aren't really a part of the strip so some do and some don't have these connectors on. What they're done is they're attached um, for testing purposes when they manufacture these and you can just cut them off and solder directly into your project. But I actually find they're actually really useful to, to use these. They're JST connectors and you can buy 
um, the opposite. Um, you will have to check the uh, the gender of these. Some are male, some are female, and it all just seems to depend upon the uh, manufacturer or the supplier. So those can plug in like that, and these are stranded wires, so they don't connect particularly well to the uh, to a breadboard, but you can easily um, clip on either a crocodile clip or you can uh, use a terminal connector to put that onto a, a solid core wire or something similar if you don't want to do any soldering. But really if you're, if you're reaching the point where you're, you're putting lots of these around the place then it is really good to have a go at soldering and uh, solder those directly on. The circuit's quite small and straightforward so if you want to take it further and make it into a more permanent board then you can easily do that using a piece of Vero board, strip board or the prototyping board. This particular one, um, I believe this is called a yeah, slice of pie, I'm um, not sure they do these anymore but you can get other hats like a, a perma prototype hat or something like that and it just allows you to solder um, between the various components on the back and this is one I made um, sort of several years ago and it still works. And here's another one, so this one I created for a Pi Zero. This is the, um, I'm not sure, there's a, a basically a Pi Zero prototyping hat. And when that's on the hat, that was um, one I created for a bow tie as um, part of a, a costume I wore for a Wizard of, Wizard of Oz uh, event that I went to. And so you can incorporate these into uh, into clothing or things like they want. These are um, sewable um, NeoPixels that are also available. So I'll just finish off by showing you some uh, videos of this in action using. So I've got um, my bow tie, my handrail, and various other, um, like a, a disco display board that I use as well, so that you can use these at discos and such like. Hope you found that useful so there'll be details on my website about this all the links are in the description and hopefully you'll be able to get this up and running yourself uh, my next video i'm going to look at um, a graphical user interface that i wrote for this um, i wrote it a few years ago and i've recently made a few minor updates to it so i'll be demonstrating that and showing how you can have fancy effects in a, a sort of disco type style interface that you can run on the Raspberry Pi. So if you found this useful um, please click like and share. Um, if you subscribe to my channel then you'll get and click the bell icon you'll get notifications of when my next video comes out on the NeoPixel stroke, pixel strip GUI application.